Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering and analytics with Alteryx and Spotfire. Thanks for tuning in today to learn how to use input property controls in Spotfire text areas. We're in week four of my series on learning how to use property controls, and for the other videos in the series, click on the link in the top right hand corner of the screen to go to my property controls playlist. In today's video, I'm going to show you three examples of how you can use input property controls. In the first example, we'll use production data and an oil price in a property control to calculate revenue. Then I'll show you an example using input property controls to create type curves. And then lastly, I'll show you how you can use input property controls in other places like visualization titles, since my series so far has focused pretty much on the access selectors. So as you can see, I've already built up the final solution. I created an input property control where you can enter the oil price. And when I change this value, the visualization will update. So I'm going to change this oil price to 35. And although the bars don't move, notice that the axis moves and the values on the axis change. So I'll do that a few more times just so you can see it. There's that change. And here's what we're all hoping for. There we go. So this is the final result. And I'm going to recreate this in another page so you can see how to make it work. So I'll go to my other page. I've added a text area here. And we'll just call this controls. And then I'm going to right click and select edit HTML in order to work in the text area. I'm going to click on the insert property control button. And I will select input field. Next week, we'll talk about input field multiple lines. Now I'll click the new button in order to create a new property control. And I will call this one commodity price. And I need to change the data type from string to real since I want to enter a decimal. And I'm going to just enter in a value of $25. The value you enter here uh, can be changed later. So it's, it doesn't matter what you put in. I'll click OK and I'll click OK. And then I'll just add some labeling that says set oil price. And I will save it and close my text area. Now the next thing I need to do is to engage with that property control on the y-axis of my visualization to calculate revenue. And there's two ways that you can do this. You can just click the arrow as if you were going to select a column like oil production. And if I say multiplied by, and I use the syntax dollar sign squiggly bracket, you'll see it will pull up a list of all my property controls and there's my commodity price. And then I'll say as revenue to give it a name or a label. And there we have it. So that was the one way that you can do it. Or if you're not quite sure of the syntax, you can always right click and say custom expression and write your expression in here searching for your property control. There we go. And now if I change my oil price, my chart will update. Okay, so now that we've taken care of that first example, I'm going to move on to another example where we use an input property control to change the title of the visualization. And I will add another input property control. And I'll click the new button just as I did before. But this time, I'm going to leave the data type as string, because essentially for my use case here, I'm going to allow the user to enter in a text value, and that will update the visualization title. So let's just call this uh, Sweetie Peck. Uh, I've already called something field name, so I'll just call it field. I'll click OK. I'll click OK. And now in order to engage this property control in the title, we will right click and go to properties. And then we will go to the general menu. And you can see that that same syntax is, is used in the title of dollar sign squiggly. So we'll click on edit and I will search for 
the property control that I just created and I will say insert. I need to put a space in there and if I click OK and now I click close, I can change the label or I can change the title of my visualization. So Galvan Ranch and it updates. Now while this might not seem terribly impressive, what if you decide to build a template or to use a really large DXP as a template and you have the word Galvan Ranch or Sweetie Peck in the title of say 50 different visualizations, but now you wanna change it. If you start with this input property control, that means that when you wanna make that change, you just have to enter it once rather than modifying every single title in your DXP. And so it can provide a lot of efficiency that way. And now last but not least, I wanted to show you another more complex example of using input property controls to create type curves. So I'm gonna jump over to another project. So this is a project that I built a couple years ago and what you're looking at is three different text areas that are gonna generate three individual type curves. And this is very common reservoir engineering workflow in oil and gas. And as you can see, there are 16 different input parameters that are set up for each type curve. And then there's a button here that says generate type curve. And I am using these parameters in data functions in order to generate the type curves. And so every single one of these input property controls is used as an input parameter and they are called in this script. And so I just wanted to show you kind of a more detailed or complex example for how property controls can be used. That covers it for this week. Please hit like or subscribe if you found today's content useful. I appreciate every bit of support that I get from readers and watchers. Thanks and have a great week.